Yeah, look, I think our solution enables um, a number of opportunities in the conservation space. We've been able to innovate uh, a, a solution to an everyday problem where we face that uh, we have multiple images of a motion sensor, of particularly of a threatened species for our, our project. Um, and this enables us to reduce the time that we spend actually looking at the images individually and categorises it based on uh, Monique's program that she's developed for us. So um, we've been fortunate enough that we're only targeting one specific species within our motion sensor cameras. So Monique's been able to develop the program to focus on the northern quoll and train it with data to be more accurate. So I think that we've been able to utilise a program that um, others have tried to apply to the situation but have used a number of species. But because we're training it just on, on a few species, it's been an easier process. I suppose you can elaborate on the, the data that you trained it on. Yeah, definitely. So um, this kind of technology, I guess, isn't being utilised like particularly widely in like environment and conservation yet, but where it has been used is mostly in like the just presence or absence of an animal. Um, but because for consolidated minerals, it was like a really specific species that they're looking for, which was a northern quoll, we were actually able to get this identification down to like species specific, so we could identify whether there was a quoll in a photo or a dingo or a feral cat or a bird and so on. Um, so for this project, the technology I used was a combination of Python and Google's uh, open source uh, software TensorFlow. Um, and this was trained using the FASTER RCNN model, which is basically a region-based convol uh, convolutional neural network. Um, so basically, <laughs> this means um, that you don't have to put in any like specific like coding or programming like because often programming is like very like functional or operational this um, as it's kind of like based on like an animal or human brain like the technology there um, I was able to basically feed it photos of quolls and other animals and get it to learn what makes a quoll a quoll um, and then through that I can then give it photos it hasn't seen before and it takes what it's learned previously and applies that and then says, okay, I think this is a qual and it attaches a certainty to it as well. Yeah, I think it's already made a huge positive difference just for cons min. Uh, we found that our staff have spent a lot less time going through individual images just to be able to have it categorised into its folders of different species, then that's saved us heaps of time. We've also uh, taken the project to uh, some regulators and some other industry bodies to, to show them what we've been able to develop. Um, there's been a lot of interest in it so far and we're working with a couple of those partners to, to understand how we could apply it to other situations across, uh, ac across conservation. I think that it hasn't been utilised very widely in conservation historically with the success that we've been able to get with Monique's program. Yeah, definitely. And um, like the people we spoke to basically like expressed a lot of interest because even though like people are starting to learn about this technology more, definitely in the environment space it's not being utilised to its full potential. Um, and in a lot of instances, people haven't seen anything like that, be, uh, like this being used before, particularly for like photos of wildlife and endangered species. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it can be tailored to like a specific business's needs. So if they're looking for another animal that isn't a northern quoll, you can basically like retrain or add to the current program and just add in like whatever species they're looking for, provided that they've got um, enough photos of it existing. Uh, I mean, there's definitely like a lot of places for it to go, it, even just at Consolidated Minerals. Um, like the original project was done in about 10 to 12 weeks and we basically just got that species specific identification done um, with like a really basic UI. So going forward, um, there's potential for things like expanding the amount of species it can do, um, improving the accuracy of it, just with uh, like training it on a larger amount of photos and doing things like having a dynamic background on the photo uh, to maintain accuracy. Um, we'd also like to do things like extract metadata from the photos, so not just whether there's a quoll or a dingo or whatever animal topped up in it, but also um, the time, the temperature, and like the GPS location. Um, and then even potentially making something like a web-based application that's super accessible. Um, so anyone at Consbin who needs to can upload photos uh, just using the web application and then they'll be able to see potentially like a heat map of where these quolls um, or animals of interest have popped up 
Um, and then ideally the, the big thing would be um, getting a spot pattern algorithm going and looking at the unique spot patterns on the quolls because they all have a unique pattern on their back um, and then using that to uniquely identify them and then potentially track their movements in combination with that metadata being extracted from the photos. Yeah. Understanding their dispersal and their range within each of the areas and then trying to understand for us as well, they have a fairly short life, so trying to determine how long we're seeing the same quolls in the same region if they've got a very small dispersal area or if they are in fact moving further afield than we originally thought. So um, we'd love to use the technology in other areas of environmental management across our operations. We do a lot of water monitoring for compliance reasons um, and obviously our rehabilitation monitoring over time. It's great to see what innovation and tech can do and I guess uh, Consmin acknowledges that innovation and technology is the way forward for us to improve our business systems and, and processes so really looking at some fun ways that we can uh, improve on that space.